All right. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there she is from Lake Oswego, the first of the year, ladies and gentlemen, for Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year, and a Happy New Year to you, too. You you say you're a little tired today, and let's explain. Uh, she has a touch of the cancer. And, uh, <laughs> I have a touch of chemo fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just exhausting, and I'm just hitting the beginning of it. It's going to hit me hard today. Really? Yeah. They're giving, yeah. They're, giving, they're giving you a heavy dose of it, though, right, is what's happening well, here? Friday, I had an all-day session. Yeah. yeah. And then for two days, you wear a body pump at home to pump more into you. Uh -huh. And then I get two days free. This is the second time I've had this heavy chemo. And I get two days free when I just feel like a normal human being. Yeah. And so that was Sunday, Monday, two days, and I thought I was getting home free. And uh, and then and and even this morning, two emails I wrote to friends. Yeah. I said, "Wow, this I'll take this. I'm feeling just like a normal human being." Yeah. And then a couple of hours ago, it just hit me, boom, and it's going to get worse. I can feel it. Yeah, oh, boy. You know, it's it's a fatigue when it gets real when it gets hit the, the at the worst. It's like I've never, ever, ever felt in my life. The, I, the idea of, you know, you need to eat and you go to the kitchen and you look and you think, maybe I would like a scrambled egg. There isn't a chance you have that much energy to cook a scrambled egg. <laughs> really? Well. And what I did this time is load up on frozen meals because sticking something in the microwave is the best I can yeah, do. But you got to lift them. You have to lift them. Uh... Well, uh, you know, I can manage that much, but it's hard. You're right. You well, know. you better be glad you don't have a cat now because taking care of the cat would be a. an You know effort. what my biggest concern was? I mean, that my kitty died in spring. Mm -hmm. um, he was 14. But you know what my biggest concern was back then is that he was an ankle biter. And he really didn't like anybody but me much. And so when I die, who would ever take him? So it was kind of a blessing that he died of old age when he did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm babysitting a cat here. Yes. Uh, we do it every now and then for our friend Jack Garfine and his lady Natalia. They're moving into a new place, so they didn't want to have the cat go through a whole bunch of stuff while they were moving. So, Plus, you might lose the cat in the move. You so know? <laughs> we got the cat for a couple of days, and then it's turned into a week, and we don't mind it because we, we love the cat, you know, outside of the fact that she's tearing up the furniture, which is not making us happy. But uh, she's uh, – uh, it's funny. We have a guest room. Uh, do you know where her favorite place is to sleep in the house? The no. guest room. Well, she's a guest. Uh, yeah, I know. That's that's what's so precocious about it. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, uh, you know, but taking care of an animal is, uh, you know, it, it's it's it, 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 they when they want attention, they're going to get in your way, right? You know. Uh, this cat is always craving attention, so you start walking down the hall, and then she like flops down on her side, like pet me. You know, so. they're like that. They're okay. Yeah, but my, had good cats let, let me let me life. let me ask you some questions here, okay? Because uh, these are questions I get asked by like uh, oh uh, my wife and by other people who know your story. Uh, mm -hmm. People here on the on the on, the, uh, uh, on GabNet and so on. The the going through the chemo. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 you've been given kind of a terminal notice, as it were. Oh, well, not kind of. You have kind of a sell-by date, you know. Uh, and but we don't know what that date is. We don't know it's, what that date it's, it's is. It's not far in the future, but it's not tomorrow afternoon either. Right, right. Uh, excuse me. I think I'm going to sneeze any minute here. Uh, I, for some reason, I don't know, you, uh, allergies are 24-7, 365 days a year now. I, you know, I'm blessed not to know anything about that. I've never had an allergy. Really? You remember me? No. Oh, I just, I was, I'm allergic to everything. Anyway, 
Let me, uh, uh, so let me pose this to you. They, they, they say, well, you know, if I were told that I had terminal cancer uh, and they offered me chemo, I don't know if I would take it. Even though in your case it says, oh, it'll give you an extra eight months of life. Uh, so They're guessing at the time, but yeah. yes. Now, none of them are dying. They're making this assumption. You know, none of them have been given any kind of a, 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 a determination like you got. Why have you decided on the chemo? Well, first of all, understand that one of the strangest things about my cancer mm -hmm. is that if they hadn't told me, I wouldn't know I have cancer. I have no symptoms of cancer. I have symptoms of chemo, but no cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. um, and <clears throat> if I did nothing, it would progress at a certain rate and I would die. But I feel, aside from the fatigue and a couple of, uh, I've, I've been yeah. lucky so far, yeah. very minor other side effects. Um, other than that, in between, which is still, you know, there's two weeks between chemo sessions. Mm -hmm. I would say I have 11, 10 and a half, 11 good normal days. Um, that doesn't count that my energy and stamina are less than they used to be before the cancer because the cancer went to one lung. And so breathing is difficult and so I don't have as much energy. It's not difficult. It just doesn't allow me to like run up the stairs anymore, <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. Um, and I, I want... I want the time as long as I feel good. Why not? I mean, I'd, I wrote a thing this week about living, living with dying should should go together. And I'm still living a good life. Now, I said that, you know, I've got most of two weeks that I feel like a perfectly okay person. When that gets to be, if it gets to that I have out of the 14 days between... Yeah. When, if it gets to be 10, 11, 12, or even less than that, um, that I feel like I know I'm going to feel later today mm -hmm. when I really can't do much of anything but crawl to the microwave, um, then it would be time to stop and let the disease take its course, and I will do that at that time. Yeah. That, because but it, I still have yeah. very, very good life. Why shouldn't I have it? And I understand people who don't want to, and every person is different. Other people may have greater uh, effects from their cancer than I do yet anyway. And they would make a different choice. My mother, when they told her, she said, I don't want anything. Just <laughs> My mother was so funny. She just went to bed as soon as they told her. <laughs> Never got up again for three months until she died. But... Um, uh, everybody makes their own choice. It depends on how you feel, I think. Yeah, uh, because, uh, you know, I mean, people who, who have asked me this question are people not <coughs> facing that, you know, so they're only assuming what they would do if they were in that situation, but until you're in that situation, you don't know what you're going to do. I think that's true about the entire thing. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, I, I, I think before, before this ever happened to you, when you heard about people who were dying of cancer and, and they had a, you know, but they they could take chemo. You probably said to yourself, I'd never do that. No, I didn't. I didn't make a choice then. Really? I had no way to know. Yeah. But and, and there is no way to know. Other people, different kinds of cancer cause different symptoms. And they can be terribly painful or debilitating in other ways. Then I see the point. If they're if you're if you can't live a normal life and chemo is going to extend your feeling that bad, why would you do it? You know, you know what's you know what's very strange. I was talking to my friend Adrian at a party the other night, and her husband Steve, who was my best friend, died of cancer, died of lung cancer. And I was with him the night before he died at the hospital. And you wouldn't think I didn't think he was there to die. I thought he was there to just get whatever he needed to have done and then get sent home. The next day he was dead, and mm -hmm. and even she said it amazed her because she didn't expect it. It was like he was he was all spitting, yelling and screaming. He wanted out of the hospital. He didn't want to be there. But there was none of this. He didn't even, he was a heavy guy uh, in weight, 
and he hadn't lost that much weight as a result of the disease. I mean, you would not know he had cancer if you saw him the night before he died. Listen, there's there are moments that I have, as, as I said, aside from the effects of chemotherapy, mm-hmm. there are moments that when that's not affecting me, that I think, did they make a mistake? And that, that I don't know. I feel like, as I said, except I, I can't run upstairs anymore fast. I feel perfectly fine. I mean, I will go through this period of a couple of days of extreme fatigue. I didn't know until this that any human being could feel this tired. Um, and that will last a couple of days, and then it will start to lift, and I'll be fine. But I, other than that, I don't know. Yeah. And, and the charts, you know, they do blood tests and they do chest scans of me. And I can see, you know, they point out to me what's going on inside my body. But, hey, if they didn't tell me, I wouldn't know what they're pointing at was cancer either, you know. Yeah. I'm not an expert at that stuff. Um, so sometimes you sort of think, geez, did they make a mistake? No, they didn't. This is how my cancer is progressing for the moment. Who knows what's going to happen in time? Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, you know, I I just wanted to ask that question because there, everybody says what they would do if faced with the situation. Well, I would never. And I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're not in that situation. She is. So she has to determine what she wants and what's best for her. And if the if the chemo, uh, the effects of the chemo uh, are not, they're bad for a few days, but then the other part of the 14 days you've got, uh, you're in pretty good shape then, you know, I can see why there's a reason to And in my case, it's not pretty good. It's very good the rest of the time. And by the way, if I had... hmm? I was going to say, you're kind of spiffy right now. You're you're kind of... Yeah, I'm really tired. (laughs) Uh, And it's going to get worse today. But um, but think about this. If I, from the beginning, it's been 18, 19 months since I was first diagnosed and had the Whipple surgery. Yeah. If I hadn't done that, and listen, the recovery from something is a big deal, 12 hours of the Whipple surgery, there were, in the first month after it was done and the recovery, I swore I wish I had died. It was the most awful thing I have ever been through in my life, recovery from that. But now I'm fine. But um, think if I had, I had rejected that and chemotherapy, I would probably be dead by now and i might never have met the son that i had 55 years ago yeah 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 so you don't know what life is going to bring your way you know so in this case how lucky for me that i managed to get through the whipple surgery and i'm getting through chemo and by the way he had he and his family live in California in the Napa Valley, and long before we found one another, they had planned to move to Oregon, mm-hmm. and over the holidays, they found a home, and they made a bid. It was accepted. They got the loan, and before the end of this month, they will be moved in and live 30 minutes from me. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? Wow. Wow. Yeah. It would, have been, it would have been better had they moved and then you found out about him and then you <laughs> yeah, found out he on only now. lived 30 come minutes on. from you. <laughs> you come know? on. Give it a break. <laughs> this is perfectly wonderful. Oh, but I good. might never have, that might never have happened if I hadn't suffered through the goddamn whipple surgery. <laughs> yeah, well, now that now that you had that happen, where you, we mentioned this the last time that you went on Ancestry.com and one of the side effects of... Uh, ancestry is every now and then they send you something. It's that not says, ancestry. It was another one. Let's another. not give them any extra publicity. Oh, okay. Well, I used ancestry, <coughs> and and they 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 match you up with people who are closer matches to you. And and one came along and said, "What, a hundred percent match or something like that?" No, it was about fifty percent, which means in my case, what it was his that he saw at first, and they said uh, it was near fifty percent, and that means mother. <laughs> that, that's and, uh, um, but anyway so so she she found a, a son that she gave birth to <laughs> shortly after i met her uh, shortly before i met her uh and uh i remember it was it was it was playing heavily on your head at that time you know as it did with me when it happened to me uh and 
uh, to have that happen how many years ago? Uh, 55, almost 56. 56 years ago, and to have this sudden suddenly come into your life is, just, especially considering what you're going through at this time, is an absolute miracle. Just in time. Yeah, I mean, it's such a closure on a part of your life that you don't have to wonder what happened. And for him. And for, I have a grandson, a four-year-old cute little grandson. <laughs> he made this mug for me. Yes, yeah, yeah grandma. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't think I'd ever be calling you grandma. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> Is it, isn't it interesting? This is funny, and I guess there's good reason for it. You had a kid that you gave away. I had a kid that was given away. All right? We both had, we both had children, and since then we have never had children. And part of that, I think, is the fe with me was the fear of, of, of uh, having a child by someone and then having them leave me and the child being once again taken away from me. So I just was always very careful not to get people pregnant, right? Uh, I did. I made a, a real choice. Um, you know, I'm not the motherly type. I never thought I was. I don't go all gooey over children. But um, when I was approaching 40, which is pretty much, I guess people do still have babies a little past 40 now. But when I was approaching 40... I thought, you know, I'm going to be sorry if I don't have a kid. And I spent a full year thinking about it really hard. And um, I decided that, no, I wasn't all that excited about having a child. But if I loved somebody who really wanted a kid, I would do it once. And, well, he didn't turn up in time. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, but, I mean, what we've, we've all done. Uh, is that in our cases, in both our cases, we decided not to have children. And I think it was somewhat as a result of that. If you had not had that kid, then I you might... I to that for yeah. me. You think you would have been that way anyway? You would have had that determination? I, I think you exactly want. what I just described was me anyway. No. Oh, okay. But it wasn't toned by what happened in your life? Mm -hmm. because no. Because with me, it was. With me, it was. I mean, I came to the determination when I was like 50. The reason I've been so careful not to have kids is because of this distrust I have of having a woman who I would have a child by. Suddenly, we wouldn't get along any longer, and she couldn't still be a good friend, and I'd have this kid ripped away from me again. So I think... Vice so versa. Vice you know. versa, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I had this in my head that... And I suddenly came to that realization, and then I, it was a little late to go out and have a kid somewhere, you know. Well, it wasn't too late, but, you know, you have to find somebody who wants to have a kid. Well, know? there's that problem. So ultimately, I wound up with a woman who's never had any children, and I've never had any children. So we have nobody to take care of us in our old age. Well, they, you, you can't count on children to do that anyway. Yeah. My, you, there are all kinds of reasons they won't. But don't you also think that as you go through your life, if you don't have children, you probably don't hang out with people who have children? Mm, no. I, uh, well, I let me see. I'm, I'm trying to think about that. You know, you're right. <laughs> well, who can stand the little buggers if you're not well, used to them? Well, my friend Steve and his and his <laughs> his wife Adrian, he died. They, they didn't have children. Uh, Marjorie and I haven't had children. Who else are we close to? Well, she does have a lot of fr her friends who had children. You know. I have friends now who have grown children. I still think I'm 70, almost 78 years old. Yeah. And I still think it's weird to be old enough to have friends who have children who are grandparents. <laughs> you know, it just seems weird to me. Yeah. But, but now that I'm a grandparent, maybe that will be different. But... But now, people I've met later in life have adult children. But people I know from much younger in my life, most, almost all of them never had children that we didn't hang out with. And also, when, once you become a parent, you know, I, I used to describe it as back in our 30s and 40s when people had children, they went off to married people land, wherever that is, yeah. with their kids, and they they just weren't free to go out, you know, to dinner at night and all the kinds of things that we did because they had children to take care of. Well, I mean, I, I think about my career 
And I think it would have gone differently had I had children because I would have made dis- I would have made different decisions. Yes, of course. You know, uh, for instance, at one point, you know, I, I you remember we were in uh, Minneapolis, uh, and I was yes. working at a radio station, and the boss said uh, never do that again, and I said, well, find someone else to do it, and I quit right then and there. Right? You can't if you have kids. If you have kids, I would have ne- I would have thought twice before <laughs> I said that to him. You know, yes, of course. and. Uh, and I wouldn't have traveled as much for the work I was doing for 20 years. That, You know, I kept a go bag by the door, and I'd often get a call in the morning, there's a ticket at the airport, we're going to London or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can't do that if you've got a kid to take to school in the morning. Well, I was looking for a job when I was in New York, uh, anywhere, and I got a call from Houston, Texas, uh, from, uh, I think it was KILT, who wanted to hire me to come down and work for them again. You mean after you uh, after we'd already been there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was okay. this was towards the end of my stay in New York, uh-huh. uh, and uh, uh, they even flew me down there, and we talked about it. And then I went back, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. You were I, a big, 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 big hit in Houston. Yeah, you were a star there. Yeah, but you know the point that I'm making is is that I did not have any money at the time. I mean, things were not good. I was without a job. And uh, I turned it down anyway. And I wouldn't have done that had I had children. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And uh, uh, as a result, uh, the next call I got a couple of weeks later was from San Francisco, California, where they wanted me to come and work for them. And that sounded like a good idea. But had I taken the other job first, I wouldn't have taken that job or right. been able yes. to. Exactly. So, so what I'm saying is, is that without children, you have options. <laughs> I hate to say that. I think you have different kinds of options. I've never met a parent who wasn't head over heels in love with their kids. And that's a whole thing that you and I don't understand, really. Uh, It's unconditional love. You know, I mean. And, and, And we have no experience of that. Somebody said, what, 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 what's it like to have somebody who pees all over you and poops all over you and you love them? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you know fortunately that part doesn't last too long <laughs> i guess it doesn't last that long but then you get the terrible twos and then then they're going to break your heart when they're a teenager you know that you know well, well, they're programmed to do that yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean um uh, we never had to go through any of that and i don't know that i i at a certain level i miss it it would be nice but on the other hand i don't miss it you know because i did have the career and I can say that my life was very good without children. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I think you could say the same thing. I mean, look at all the wonderful places you traveled for Barbara, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, I skipped all the hard part, and now I've got a four-year-old grandkid. Exactly. How lucky for me. <laughs> so, so, somebody else did the work for you. Right. <laughs> Why, let me ask you this question. When, back then, and maybe you discussed this with him, why did you decide to give the child up? Uh, there were many reasons, but basically I was 21 years old. Back in 19, um, was it 63, I think? 21, when we were 21, was a much, much younger age than 21 is now. Yes. Um, 21-year-olds are like practically 30 year olds when we were back then. And, um, and I, you know, I'd had to quit my job because in those days it was, a, men got away with it, but women who were pregnant, who weren't married were absolutely ostracized. Well, what All I'm saying friends, is that I was going to say, there's a term we don't use today and that's unwed mother. Unwed mother. I was an unwed mother. And you know, I'd call my friends, my girlfriends about, let's go do this or that. All of a sudden, they were too busy for me. And I was all alone. I didn't have a job. I'd had to leave my job. I was living with my mother. And I, you know, I worked in the offices in those days. You're the one who gave me my career by producing your show. Yeah. Um, and I didn't think that I was equipped at all to be able to make a living and raise a child and live in a world where having... A child, when you weren't married, had not been married when you had that child. I didn't think I could do that. And here's what was terribly lucky. 
I've forgotten all the details of how he was adopted, but during my pregnancy, they an adoption. We went through the procedures for the adoption, and I was given the information on three or four couples who wanted to adopt. And I was given even their names. I could have met them if I wanted. I didn't. But, you know, who they were, their ages, their education, what kind of people they were, what they did for a living, and so on. And I could choose. And if I want, you know, who I thought would be good parents for them. Mm -hmm. And apparently, according to my son, I did a very good job. <laughs> um, and he had, he says he had a terrific upbringing, loves his parents. They're both uh, dead now. Um, and I did a good job. And it was, I know he had a better life than he would have had with me. And mm -hmm. I, there's a whole lot of things from my family background that would have made it difficult for me to know much about raising a child mm -hmm. and not very many people to turn to to help me. So I think for all of us, I did the right thing. Well, as I say, you know, there, there, there are terms that go out of fa fashion. <laughs> and unwed mother is one of them. You never hear that term anymore. No, and... Single you know, parent. <laughs> single parent you hear a lot, but not unwed mother. No, and what happened back in those days, particularly when I was still in high school, is every year when you went back to school in the fall, one or two of the girls didn't show up and they'd gone to live with their aunts somewhere right. in Kansas, you right. know? Um, and there were there were homes for unwed mothers, unwed mother yes. homes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was a terrible thing. All your friends disappeared. They wouldn't have anything to do with you. And, um, and you were just ostracized from life. Yeah. But you look know? at the benefit. <laughs> it happened a couple of weeks ago to you. Listen, there's something quickly I want to talk about. We're running over, but I don't care. You know, I have so I, much. I'm getting I, tired. I, I have two hours to waste here. You said that you wanted to mention what you did last week. You, you went on a. No, we'll do that next time. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I want to hear about very, it. Very, very interesting. And we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. Did it? Was it helpful to you? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, uh, with, with that, see, what we'll do is that's the cliffhanger for the next, uh, <laughs> yes, for the next right. gathering. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, you look, believe it or not, you don't look tired. I'm ex I'm tired. All the time I'm tired. And I, I look at you and I go, she's tired? You know? Listen, I got out of the shower about two hours before we started this. And I'm like, God, I'm tired. I'll lie down for 30 minutes. I slept for an hour and a half. Oh, <laughs> That's going to be my day, I'm pretty sure, the rest of the day, too. Oh, well. Anyway, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Ladies we'll and gentlemen, oh, that's Ronnie Bennett, by the way, timegoesby.net. That's where you go if you want to read her wonderful meanderings. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Love you, dear.